What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another video that I did not intend on recording. I really didn't. I really didn't have any plans to do this video, but, um, you know, we always say we're done, or at least I always say I'm done, and um, I was messing with my tune. I know, man, a couple of videos ago, I said it was perfect and all that stuff, perfect, perfect, but uh, the reality is, you know, when you're addicted to the game like we are, like I am, like we are, sometimes you just can't help yourself and you always want to try to get better. I mean, that's the goal. That's the fun part of this all, right? Uh, real quick, sorry about the fan noise, but you know, I'm here in Vegas. It's hot. Got to keep my amps cool. Got to keep myself cool. But uh, anyway, I digress. Um, Yeah, man, I was messing around. And uh, as always, disclaimer, 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 as always, my crossover frequency points, my crossover points, my uh, crossover slopes, all that are for my tweeters, my mids, my mid bass, my system. It may or may not work for you, but I am not recommending that you do that because if you like my sound and you want to try to copy my sound or get somewhere close to it, but your equipment cannot do that, I don't want to be held responsible if you damage your equipment. Uh, and that's not me talking like I got some exclusive stuff that nobody else can have. It's a ton of you guys that have it. I mean, that's the reason why I bought it. I heard a lot of you guys' cars with this equipment. I wanted it for myself, and I got the right frequencies, so on and so forth. But I say that to say, if you do not have equipment that can play the frequencies that my equipment plays, please don't try it because I would hate for you to damage your gear. Um, back to uh, what I was talking about, frequencies. Um, for those of you who followed this channel, my crossover frequencies from the back to the front is easier for me that way from the sub to the front um it's a three-way system with rear fill my sub is crossed over uh, it's all active my sub is crossed over from 20 hertz to 80 hertz my mid base in the door are morel mw9s they're crossover from 80 hertz to 250 hertz my mid range in the dash is morel mm3 they used to be crossed over from 250 hertz all the way up to 2700 hertz and then my tweeters are morel elite carbon alto or alto alto and um they used to be crossed over from 2700 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz 20 hertz on the low all the way up to 20,000 hertz on the high side well i did some tweaking and i changed my mid-range and my tweeter frequencies from 250 to 27 all the way uh, down to 250 to 2200 hertz and my tweeters are now 2200 hertz all the way up to 20,000 as opposed to 2700. I wanted a warmer sound. I wanted to see what uh, these tweeters can do. I've, I've actually had them crossed over even lower. I won't say how low because it was dangerously low, but I had them crossed over even lower and they sounded okay. But, you know, I was in the process of perfecting my tuning and all that stuff and still learning it, you know, because I, I tune by ear. I just, I tune by sound. But anyway, um, I brought them down from 2700 hertz down to 2200 hertz and what it has done is uh, it's warmed up the sound of course and it's also brought my mid bass up it brings it up on the dash even more but that's not the purpose of this video well it adds to it it it, it goes along with it um you know I have re rear fill I have the Morel Maximo Ultra he or maximal ultra 602 he mk2 the highly efficient uh morel components it's their step above entry level i believe if i'm not mistaken but i had those as my rear fill now back when i first started doing these videos when i first started this build i was using a dayton audio dsp hey it worked for me man you know it did what it did i'm not knocking dayton the only problem i really had with dayton was the noise that all of us have and i was able to get rid of the noise and some of you guys have tried my method hopefully it worked for you guys um i was use i was using the date and i was fine with it my boy who has the dyne audio um honda accord he stepped up he had the arc audio ps8 pro he stepped up from that and got the helix dsp3 if i'm not mistaken and he gave me gave me his arc audio ps8 pro and you know you know, scratching my head. I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing, especially compared to the Dayton? But I dove in. Now, the reason why I mentioned the Dayton is because the Dayton tunes differently, of course, different software. But the way I had the Dayton tuned with my rear field that runs off my head unit, it was a seamless blend. It sounded really good to me, at least. To me, it was 
spot on, you know, it was uh, reminiscent of when I had my system, my diamond audio system I talked about in other videos back in the day. Anyway, when I put the Arc Audio PS8 Pro in and started tuning similarly to the Dayton and then started making my own adjustments for that particular DSP software, when I would run the uh, rear fill, it, it was just off a little bit. You know, it's something about it, it was pulling from the front. Some of you might say, yeah, because of phase shift and all that. Yeah, so I, I you know, I, ch I work with the phasing and all that, and I got my mid bass back, but my center, my center focus, my, you know, where when you have your system's time aligned right, your lead vocalist is center, or your lead drummer, or whoever is supposed to be in center, is in the center. But when I would run my rear fill, even off my head unit power, when I would run my rear fill, it would just shift really bad, and it would just sound off. It would sound like a factory left right stereo system and i'm like nah man i can't go from having a similarly sound cue type tune and i'll talk about that in a second i i don't i can't go from a similarly tuned like a sound cue system tune to having rear fill and ruining all that altogether. now i know there's differential rear fill and you put them way up in the back in uh i guess the height of your ears in line with the height of your tweeters and stuff like that and you know, I didn't want to go that far. I definitely didn't want to put tweeters way in the back or mids in the back or anything like that. That's why I put them in the doors in the factory location with the exception of the tweeter that I cut in that y'all saw from the unboxing video of the 602 HE MK2s. Anyway, I started messing with my frequencies and changed those frequencies. And I guess initially when I tried to do the rear fill with these speakers, I would save the rear fill just for when I had passengers because it didn't sound good with me riding by myself. Um, when I initially tried to do the rear fill, it wasn't working, which is why I saved it for the passengers, but it wasn't working because I guess the frequencies and the tweeter position and the crossover points, all that stuff, it, it just wasn't happening. Anyway, all this rambling, I'm doing all this rambling to say by me changing my crossover points for my mids and tweeters, it balanced the frequencies that these mk2s are receiving even though i'm running them flat it balanced with the uh inherent crossover uh frequencies that come with the speakers and it works with my front stage now it's going to be hard for me to try to get it to translate through video but i'm going to do my best but now it works with my front stage to where it doesn't pull away from my front stage it widens my front stage i mean my front stage is so wide now certain songs i'm like looking over to the side because it feels like my stage is even wider even though my tweeters are on axis if you look at a lot of like high-end competitive sq cars they have their mids and tweeters in custom pillars really wide as far as they can sometimes the tweeters are even on the uh driver and passenger door to make the stage as wide as possible a lot of those cars don't have rear fill where my rear fill makes it seem like my stage is that much wider um and real quick going into the talk about sq cars i know you know you know i could be a knucklehead talking about what i do or don't like about sq cars the thing that i i'm not crazy about sq cars is i love that the lead singer the lead vocalist is centered in the dash i i can't live without it now but sometimes some cars the dash is so narrow that the lead lead vocalist is just right there and it's like not much spread across and i mean i don't need to have the whole car filled with sound because it'll sound like a front to back left right stereo factory system i don't want that but i do like a wider presence and a fuller sound altogether. so what i would normally do is um i would have my head unit faded all the way forward uh the forward fade goes all the way to 25 and it would completely cut the sound out from the rear field speakers if i had rear passengers i turned it on that way they can get some of the front the back and the sub but now I faded my head unit back from 25 to 24 or even 23 to bring it back to bring some sound out of the rear field speakers. And I'll do a sample, a demo to let you hear. They're not very loud, but because of the position of the tweeter, I hear it because it's close enough to my ear and close enough to the front tweeters and the front stage to bring the sound all around. Um, I'm noticing some SQ cars, like highly competitive SQ cars, they're starting to do rear field too. Uh, they do it better than me, I'm sure. They do it through their DSP. They have amplifier for the rear speakers. I'm not willing to go that far, especially because I don't compete. But for me, I think my rear fill works pretty good. And I've heard some SQ cars with rear fill that's done correctly, I guess. And it sounds good. My system sounds comparable. 
you know, with my rear field the way it is. So anyway, I'm going to play a song and I'm going to switch from my head unit being faded all the way forward, completely cutting out the sound from the rear field. And then I'm going to turn the rear field on just a little so you guys can hopefully pick up how it's being carried around and filling the whole car differently than it did before. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, uh, well, I'm going to use this song, Make Us Stronger. I know a lot of you guys are very familiar with it. Very dynamic song, right? I'm going to start with this song and I'm going to show you guys my head unit is faded all the way forward, all the way up to 25. That's as far as it goes forward. I'm going to let you hear that um, first. Then I'm going to fade it back maybe two points to like 23 and see if you can hear the rear fill, um, how the sound changes and how the stage uh, widens. So here we go. But in the end I know that everything happens for a reason, to make us stronger. So I just uh, moved my fader from 25 to 23 to bring the sound back and I'm gonna hold the microphone to where you can hear some of the tweeter in the back uh, pick up and well hopefully you'll be able to hear it pick up but in the end I know that everything happens for a reason to make us stronger can tell but it makes it so much wider to me um, I was showing the camera on the sides of the doors so that you can get an idea of where I'm hearing it now like the little nuances um, when I have it fully faded forward um, yeah, I mean I hear everything that's in the song but I don't want to say it's limited but it's kind of limited in width because it feels like I'm not picking up those nuances that I heard just a second ago in the corner over there. Um, it could be me, you know, just thinking, what do they call that, um, psychoacoustics, where you think something is better or you convince yourself that it's better. I don't think I'm convincing myself that it's better. It actually sounds better to me that way. And again, it's not pulling away from my mid bass or anything in the front. My sound stage is still in the front. It's still very present, very warm, very heavy up there. And um, it's working, man, so, and, you know, I don't have a lot of passengers in my car very often, so part of me was like, man, you got these uh, costly speakers sitting in your back door, you're not even using them. 
get to work, mess with your tune a little bit, even though I don't like to touch my tune once I get it right. Mess with your tune a little bit and, oops, mess with your tuning a little bit, get it right, get the uh, rear feel working like it should. Now it is, man. So now my system is even that much more dynamic to me at least. Hopefully it is to you guys. I'm going to leave it as it's set with it faded back to like 23. I've already gotten used to the sound and I bounce back and forth from 23 to 25 over and over and over again countless times and I like it and there's not I mean you'd have to be like seriously fully focused meditating to hear a difference in the sound in the sound stage presence it's not taken away from the front stage whatsoever matter of fact I'll play that section one more time and I'll mute the front stage altogether because you know my rear field is running off my head unit I'll mute the front stage altogether and let you hear how not loud the rear fill is but it's loud enough just to pull the sound back to widen the stage and bring the sound all the way around for everybody all right so check this out That's the rear. It's not even that loud. And you saw my head unit's all the way up. Not even that loud. So now I'm going to turn the uh, fronts back on so you can see how that little bit of rear fill back there adds to the front stage and makes it wider and brings it all the way around full circle. Okay, so anyway, um, I hope y'all was able to hear that. Um, I know my videos are usually a little bit more refined, you know, but like I said, I was messing with my tuning, um, playing around and stuff, and I'm like, okay, let me lower these frequencies, lower the frequencies, got the sound that I wanted. Like, you know what? Let me get these uh, rear fills going, put them to use, and now I'm getting that sound that I was getting when I had my Dayton DSP in here, and uh, I like it, man. I like it, and I like that it's not pulling away from the front stage and messing it up because i was really disappointed when i first did it turned on the rear fill and all the presence all the mid bass all the warmth everything <clears throat> excuse me all the uh center the lead vocalist in the center was being pulled away and it's like man this sucks got these expensive speakers back here to make my listening experience that much more enjoyable and it wasn't but now that I got it right, you know, my head ain't this big for no reason. There's something rattling around in there. <laughs> anyway, I got it right. I'm happy with the tune. Uh, some songs, uh, there's little nuances that you may or may not hear. But, I mean, every song's not going to have sounds bouncing around like that particular song. You know, it's just part of it. But still, even with songs that don't have different dynamic sounds bouncing around, it's still... Um, good to have a wider stage than just a narrow focused stage and not that my stage was narrow and focused and just dull but the rear field just makes it that much better at least to me matter of fact i'll play one more song just because and uh yeah i'll end the video like that matter of fact hmm, i'll play a song that's pretty dynamic that's not like that type of music <laughs> Here we go.
That's it for the rear field. Really low, right? And here's everything. At the body shop, do you